The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbidu Evangelistic Ministry. In preparation for our study, let us begin with a time of silent prayer. Now this opportunity gives you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ the time that you can ensure that you are in fellowship for the teaching of the Word of God. Remember the very important principle in 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This gives you, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a tremendous problem-solving device. You can use it before the teaching of the Word of God to guarantee that not only are you in fellowship with the Lord, but also to guarantee that you can understand by means of the Holy Spirit the teaching of the Word of God that we are about to face. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we consider it a privilege to have the freedom and the opportunity of fellowshipping in you and in your word. We are grateful, Father, that through your grace, you brought us this time in this Bible study to take in your precious word, which is the only shield we can equip and arm ourselves to confront any false teaching that religion tries to spread in the devil's world. So we pray, O oh Lord, that uh, you give us the concentration through the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this Bible study, which is grace to us and uh, to avail of this opportunity. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, how to go to heaven the Bible way. Okay, in heaven, all believers will be perfect. Okay, there will be no more flaws there. No more flaws. Everybody will say probably about everybody else, my, how you have changed in heaven. There is no need of erasers and pencils anymore. Do you know why? Because all the idiosyncrasies, all of those negative things will be gone, totally gone. They'll all be removed forever. So, to repeat the emphasis on salvation, the doctrine of soteriology, believing that Christ died on the cross is history. But believing that Christ died for you on the cross is salvation. Believing in God is not the means of salvation. It is believing in Christ. And do you know why? Because in John 14, 6, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Now, how does one enter the church, the body of Christ? Answer by means of spirit baptism, Acts 1.5. The mechanism, faith alone in Christ alone, Acts 16.31. You see, salvation has always been, 
always is and always will be by faith alone in Christ alone. Again, salvation is not by being baptized, by being a member of a church, by following the golden rule, by raising your hands, by walking down an aisle, by doing good, by following the Ten Commandments. Now, how did the Old Testament people get saved? The answer, by looking forward to the cross, by faith. Every member of the human race Oh, by the way, how do we, New Testament believers, get saved? Well, the answer is by looking backward to the cross, also by faith. You see, every member of the human race has responsibility to listen and believe in the gospel. Acts 16, 31, John 6, 28 to 29, Ephesians 1, 13. It is God's declared will that every member of the human race be born again. Now, in 2 Peter 3, 9, God's Word says, He is not willing, meaning God, He is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all be saved shall come to repentance. Also, 1 Timothy 2, 4, God wants all men to be saved. Now, Christ is the only way to heaven. All other roads are detours to doom. The Bible informs us of the following. All are sinners, Romans 3, 10 to 3. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, all without exception are guilty, Romans 3, 19. Number three, all stand condemned before God. John 3, 18 and 36. Number four, all are under the penalty of spiritual death, which is eternal separation from God. Ephesians 2, 5, God made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Number five, all are helpless to wipe out their own guilt. Romans 3.20, Therefore no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Again, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, is there any good reason why you, unbeliever, cannot trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Man, through the ages, has tried to bridge the gap in many ways, such as man's good works, religion, philosophy, and morality, all without success. There is only one, and only one remedy for this problem of separation. You know what it is? It is the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sin and bridged the gap from God to man. 1 Timothy 2, 5-6 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Romans 5, 12 to 21. Adam's sin brought spiritual death to all men, but through Christ we are made alive. Now, we all have a choice to make, accept or reject his solution. 
But remember, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stand condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son, John 3, 18. He who believes in the Son has life, but he who does not believe in the Son does not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him, John 3, 36. Then Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6, 35. Now this is not physical food, but spiritual food, eternal life. Total satisfaction which describes the total salvation package. Verse 44. No one come to me except the Father which hath sent me draws or attracts. Now, this no one here is the negative volition which cuts off the power supply to believe. The unbeliever's faith is not energized, not enlivened, not activated, thus non-appropriating. Now, when it comes Come to me, that's believing in Christ. Yet, to all who received him, to those who gave the right to become children of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12. Now, how can one believe when he doesn't know whom to believe in? Romans 10, 14. A person who refuses to make the greatest decision, most important decision in life to believe in Christ is choosing an endless nightmare. A person who spurns the one who suffered untold agony on the cross as his substitute has appalling consequences. A person who heard the gospel and rejects Christ as Lord and Savior is committing the only unpardonable sin, sin against the Holy Spirit. A person's attitude towards Christ determines his eternal future. To believe in Christ, eternal life. To reject Christ, eternity in the lake of fire. The lake of fire, which is God's garbage dump, is the final destination of the devil and his angels, and that is where unbelievers go and live for all eternity. We will continue this study tomorrow.